Our Comitex 2019 coverage is made possible by Seasonic, Azrock, Western Digital and Builds.gg. Check them out in the links below. What's up guys, welcome back to Comitex. It is day four. We are here at the Azrock booth and I'm Stuart from GGF. And we are checking out some new boards for the Intel side of the camp here from Azrock. And we're gonna look at some memory optane technology at the back and also some new Thunderbolt tech. Now looking at two new boards on the Z390 cam for ASRock is the Phantom Gaming X and the Phantom Gaming 7. We'll look at the X first and then we'll check out the PG7. Now these two boards are similarly based on the Tai Chi Ultimate but they do have a complete new VRM design. Uh, they are running a Dr. Moss 50 amp power delivery with a 12 plus 2 intersil VRM. That's on the Phantom Gaming 6. So it is the beefiest VRM that ASRock has on, Z, on their Z390 uh, lineup. And of course, it's got this whole new uh, different board layout with that massive RGB chipset cover. And that does look phenomenal. It's a high glossy material and it's just got RGB all over it. Another area I really do like is the IO cover design. It is RGB and it just blends in nicely with the uh, rest of the board. And it does have a built-in IO cover, same with the PG7. And what ASRock was saying is these IO, the built-in IO cover, they're the only brands that theirs can slightly move. They have a one millimeter movement in all directions. As they found that a lot of cases uh, do have a bit of play, they have a plus or minus, uh, plus or minus play and these boards can cater for that so you'll have no issues with these built-in IO covers. Now these boards do have Bluetooth 5 and there is a metal backplate included on the Phantom Gaming X. Very nice looking board and that is one of my personal favourites. Now moving down to the Phantom Gaming 7, this board might look familiar. We did use this in our PG7 build. We did for the ASRock booth right here. We'll get some shots of that. We didn't go with an RGB theme only because it does have a bit of red on the board. So we did go with a red and white theme. Now this does have pretty much the same board layout as the PGX, uh, same NVMe layout. And when I talk about the NVMe uh, M.2 layout, these are the same as on the earlier Z390 boards from ASRock, like the Tai Chi, the Tai Chi Ultimate, you're still getting the three NVMe M.2 slots. But with this board, you have a slightly less VRM. It's a Dr. Moss 50 amp power delivery with 10 plus two intersil VRM, and it doesn't have any Wi-Fi 6. I don't think I mentioned that on the Phantom Gaming uh, X. It is the world's first Z390 board to have the Wi-Fi 6. No other brands are doing it, so that's nice. You're gonna get that 2.4 gigabit uh, Wi-Fi coming out of there. And both of these boards, the Phantom Gaming 7 and the PGX, also have the 2.5 gigabit uh, networking as well. While we're checking out the Intel side of things here at ASRock, let's take a look at the Intel Optane memory. Now, this is the Intel Optane H10. Previously, with the Optane memory setup, it had to depend on running a hard drive in the setup. So it acted as the caching prot protocol for like a hard drive or a SATA SSD, and then it boosted the speeds. But a lot of people well, sort of didn't want that. They wanted to run a standalone. So it was either one or you couldn't run it. But now Intel has the H10 Optane memory. You can run it as a standalone SSD. But in the downside of that, it doesn't support the caching. So they pretty much just reverse the roles. Now, if you take a look at the speeds, you are getting decent speeds of this. You're getting just over 2,500 megabytes for the read and just under 1,800 megabytes for the write. And also with the cost as well, it is set to be uh, normally a bit cheaper than running just a dedicated NVMe uh, SSD drive. Now lastly over here on the Intel side of things at ASRock, I just want to cover the Thunderbolt 3 AIC R 2.0 card from ASRock. Now what this card does, it sort of cleans up your cable management, cable clutter in your system. So what they've added is an internal Thunderbolt port on their video card and that runs to an internal port on the Thunderbolt card. So when you're linking all your devices together, you don't have to go from the outside of your video card then back into your system. You can just run a small, simple little cable inside. So when you're running something like your monitor to your dedicated video card, the cable will be much, much cleaner. Alrighty guys, that is it from the Intel side of things at the ASRock booth. Hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more Computex coverage.